when I began my interest in aviation, the thing one used to do in those days was hang around outside airfields, and when you saw an airplane, you would underline the number in a little book. The compiler of that book was John W. R. Taylor, who was also the fourth editor of Jane's All the World's Aircraft. And I never in a million years thought that I would end up working under his tutelage. We like to think it's the premier aviation technical reference for the entire world and has been for the last hundred years. We cover in it all aircraft that are either in production or anticipating production anywhere in the world, both large airliners down to small microlites, to helicopters and even to blimps and airships. Well, the book has been edited by only six people in the past hundred years, the first of which of course was our founder, Fred Jane. And he trained the second editor, C.G. Gray, who trained the third editor, who trained the fourth editor, who was working with the fifth editor, and then the fourth editor also trained me as well. So I like to think that I have a hand back straight to Fred Jane, the founder of the book. All the World's Aircraft owes a lot to Jane's first reference book, which was what we now call Jane's Fighting Ships. And at the time that Jane started this book, there were several other references for ships. The trouble was that they were rather chaotic and Fred Jane brought order to this and he laid out a standard framework upon which each ship description was laid. And what happened was that when anybody was looking for a ship or wanted to compare a ship, the way that Jane had organized the book meant that they were rapidly able to find what they wanted but also quickly able to compare that ship with another similar ship and work out which were the strengths and weaknesses. And Fred Jane took that approach when he started All the World's Aircraft, which is why it's so simple to compare one aircraft with the other in fighting ships and All the World's Aircraft, and for the customers quickly to compare one with the other, come to conclusions about their potential. It was a masterstroke, and we owe the success of both publications to Fred Jane's genius and common sense. We used, in the old days, when all the world's aircraft was just paper, to have an on-season and an off-season. Now, for the benefit of our electronic readers, we're updating throughout the year. And every 31st of December, we take whatever we've done, and that is then frozen in time, and provides the basis of the paper version of the book, which continues to appear each year. We've only produced 97 editions in 100 years. That is mostly due to enemy action. During the First World War, all the world's aircraft missed one entry because Fred Jane censored the information on British aircraft in order to make sure that the enemy forces didn't find out things that they shouldn't have done about our aircraft. But the situation, so far as, as far as censorship is concerned, is quickly resolved and the book then continued to appear. In the Second World War, two issues were missed. The first one was due to enemy bombing. The second one was due to pressure of work. But it did mean that the 1945 edition, which was published early in 1946, was able to benefit from all the information that was gathered from assessing German aircraft after the war had been won. So we did get in that book a fantastic amount of information and it's a wonderful summary of what was then known about the combatant air forces of World War II. Interestingly enough, so far as the future is concerned, before he started fighting ships and all the world's aircraft, Fred Jane was an author of science fiction. And he made some pretty accurate prophecies about what would happen in the future. Unfortunately, I don't share his genus, so what is going to happen in the next hundred years so far as aircraft technology is concerned is difficult to say. If you look at what's happened in the past hundred years, things are almost now what would have been unimaginable a hundred years ago. All we can say is that there is a reason why Jane's All the World's Aircraft should be around in a hundred years' time, and it will continue to reflect 
what is happening and make prophecies into the future throughout all that period of time. We're well established now and there's no reason why all the world's aircraft can't continue. There's a definite need for it.